In this episode of Crystal Uncorked, I sit down with my friend and industry partner, Susan Nagan of WhizBang Training. Something we talk about that I loved in this episode was visioning to focused action. Susan talks a lot about how to create a business that you, you love, a life you love, some really great tactical exercises that I walked away with so much from that conversation, which we filmed last week. And every single morning, this conversation with Susan and her tips have been coming up for me every morning. So I hope that it has the same impact on you um, of what she shares. And also we talk about burnout, a hot topic, you know, I feel like especially lately and something I'm really interested in. And she's got some really great advice around burnout. We also talk about working with a spouse. And um, and then we celebrate because Wisbang Training is celebrating their 23rd year in business as this is going out. So we're so excited for our partners. Before we dive into this conversation, let me just share a little bit more about Susan. Susan Nagan has a knockout one-two punch of sophisticated big business skills and street smart small business experience. She has worked as a senior executive for retailing giants like Bloomingdale's, Macy's, and Lord & Taylor. She has been on the leadership team of a small retail business and understands the joys and challenges of being an entrepreneur. Susan quickly discovered that the problems of operating a multi-billion dollar company and the struggles of an entrepreneur are not that much different. In more than her two decades of business experience, Susan has effectively managed groups of over 150 employees. She's used her expert analytical skills to purchase inventory for both large and small stores and has brought a keen sense of organization to Wizbang training. As co-creator of the Retail Mastery System, the Retail Sales Academy, and the best-selling book, Marketing Your Retail Store in the Internet Age, Susan shares her skills and wisdom as a retail consultant with independent store owners, managers, and employees all over the world. I hope you love this conversation as much as I did. Let's dive in. Are you ready to open up and talk about all things business? I'm Crystal Vilkaitis, a curious entrepreneur who loves talking about business, especially over a glass of wine. I started Crystal and Cork to share open and honest conversations about my journey and talk to other entrepreneurs about their experiences. We pull back the curtain and talk about the highs and the lows. Wine isn't required, but is recommended. This is Crystal Uncorked. Susan, welcome to Crystal Uncorked. Crystal, cheers. I'm so excited to be here. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Love it. We have two big things to cheers right now. One is that this is your first podcast. I know. First ever. Which I'm is so, so excited. Exciting. And then second, you guys are celebrating 23 years in business. 23. Yes, I'm excited. Cheers. Cheers. Right. It's very exciting. Next week, 23 years. How did that happen? I am only like 28 right now. So, so I mean, you, know. you have to tell us, how did you have the vision <laughs> for WizBang when you were five? I mean, five when you're years old. I know, right? Oh, I love it. Okay, before we dive yeah. in, tell me what kind of wine you're drinking. Okay, well, I, just for you, special for you, because I know how much you love this wine provider. I'm drinking... Empathy Red. It's a Gary Vaynerchuk wine. This is part, we're part of his wine club. And so we get just a surprise box of wine, like every, maybe every four to six weeks, depending on when the new, the new, you know, wines are ready. It might, we don't know what's coming. It might be rosé. It might be a Chardonnay. This, This time it happens to be a really super delicious red blend. So I'm excited Love about it. that. Um, I confessed awesome. to Susan when we were just getting ready here that I have not had Gary V's wine yet, which is like criminal because he seriously is like one of my mentors. He's been in the social media industry forever. And one of the coolest moments of my speaker career was that I shared the virtual stage with Gary V at Bob and Susan's Retail, Retail Summit. Summit. Yeah, it was, it was so fun. Oh. Oh, and he killed it. People were just... He did. He killed it. He's great. And, you know, it was so... It had been my vision. Like, this is, you know, it had been I something that I had been visioning and manifesting for a long, long time to have Gary V 
um, come and speak as one of the keynotes at the Retail Success Summit. And I wanted that for so, so long because as big as he is now and all the things that he does now, he started, you know, in his mom and dad's liquor store. Yeah. Like, and, you know, he's a retailer. He started as a retailer in a family business, just like so many of our clients. And so it was super cool to get his take on, um, you know, what it's like to be in a family business and be in retail and where things are going. And so it was just like, I, it was like one of my dreams come true. So. Oh, which I, I love that you got to see that come through and I got to be a part of it too. So, you know, I've listened to a lot of Gary's content and, um, he was the most, I felt the most um, vulnerable in that and like emotionally got a little like emotional seeing people in their back room, just like he was. I mean, it was just, you guys put on the best events and uh, that was such an Thank honor. You. Okay. Thank you. Now I am drinking a, um, a Kosh red blend nice. uh, and it's Dreamville. So speaking of dreams coming Ooh, true. Dreams come um, true. Yeah. And this is a really nice, smooth blend. I interviewed the owner of Akash and uh, that was an awesome combo. So we've got our red wine. Now let's talk about this 23 years in business here. Uh, um, yes. I yes. Mean, it's huge. So Last month, I celebrated my tenure and I did a mm -hmm. podcast about the 10 things I've learned over the 10 years. I yes. bet there's like 5 million things you've learned over the past 23 years. Oh my gosh. So many things, so many good things, so many bad things, so many good decisions, so many bad decisions. Yeah. And yes, it's been just being in business for 23 years has been huge education. It's been so fun and so frustrating. And so, um, you know, all it's all, it's all the things, it's all the feels, it's, all you know, being an entrepreneur. I, I know that, you know, right. It's just, it's as high as you can be and sometimes as low as you can go. So, Oh, I mean, so incredibly true. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love to know what are those, like, I, I know this is probably really hard to pick a couple of things that you feel has gotten you guys to this milestone. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I was thinking a little bit about this, just but only like 10 minutes before you popped on. So I'm like, I better have something to say to Crystal. Um, but I think, I think that one of the things that's worked for us has been just being willing to go big and go all in and not always take the safe path. And sometimes that doesn't work out, but sometimes it does. And, you know, I think that that's really what can, you know, what can move you forward in a big way. And, you know, to try the big things, the scary things, the things that you don't know how to do yet and figure them out. And, um, and, and like, that's, I think to be a, an entrepreneur, to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to have that risk tolerance to go big and try those big, scary things. So that's, you know, that's, that's one thing. And you do a great job of that, Crystal. This podcast is a perfect example. Yeah. Right? Well, I know, you know, honestly, I feel like I don't take a lot of risks. And Dustin and I talk about this a lot. He's like, Bevis, you've got to take more risks. You've got to go bigger. And there's like this side of me that really wants to play a bigger game. Like I do feel like I hold myself back. Um, but then there are definitely like, I'll talk to friends and they're like, what are you talking about? You do take risks. Like, first of all, you're a business owner. That's a risk in itself. In and of itself. You know, but I really, I do admire, I, I watch obviously like what you and Bob and the whiz bank training team does and these events that you guys put on and your software that you're building, which we'll talk about that. Um, and we'll I talk about a big risk. That's, I that's a yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you're just like now a software developer. I know. Well, no, not me. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm the visionary uh, strategist behind it, but somebody else is doing all the coding. I'm doing that yes. work. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a tough job right there. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I mean, I just, I, I'm always inspired by what you guys are doing and what you're creating. And I feel like you're always looking at how can we help the retailer next? Like it just it it really 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 drives us and it's you know it is 
It is the first of our core values that we are, um, you know, we are always working to provide an in, uh, an ever increasing positive impact for the independent retail community. That's like our driving force. Always. Love it. So, yeah. Um, you, and you're doing an incredible job of that, Thank by you. the way. Um, you work with Bob, who was on the show. We'll link to his episode too. That was such a fun conversation. There was so much gold in there. Uh, which Bob is your husband for those who don't know you. And I don't think I could ever work with Dustin in the capacity that you guys do. So there's obviously challenge. There must be challenges working with your husband. Like I just, of course, there's got, of course. Um, how do you guys make it work? Well, you know, first of all, I think, of course there are lots of challenges. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I think we're super lucky in that we, We just naturally are aligned in the way we think and um, our values are aligned and we, and our, our, we, we do a lot of work, uh, you know, to create a vision that we, so that we're both pulling, you know, we're rowing in the same direction, moving in this, you know, to the same place, because I think that's where a lot of conflict can come in and, it, it really kind of starts in those big things and then it shows up in the little teeny day to day, like can things can get like, right. Like for people, but I think it, it comes from those bigger pieces like, Oh, you, we may have different visions about how this company should be run or, but you know, I think we're pretty lucky that, um, you know, that we naturally kind of fall into alignment that way, but we work at it too. You know, we, you know, we make a point of, making sure that we do that work together and talk about it when we have differences of, of opinion. You know, Bob is a big personality in case you haven't met him. He's a big personality. And so, you know, that, you know, to, to be able to, um, I don't want to say stand up, but like to, to be able to like hold your own space with a big personality like that is something you have to learn and work at. Right. Wow. Especially in a in a business situation. So um, but it's great because we, you know, we have each other to constantly bounce ideas off of and we have each other to constantly vet like, am I crazy or is this actually going to work? Yeah. And, you know, so that that does allow us to take some of these big rests and do these big things because, you know, he's my cheerleader and I'm his cheerleader and, you know, also sounding board and also like, you're nuts. Don't do that. Do this instead, you know? Right. So, you know, we're really, we're really fortunate that way. Yeah. It's like, it's built in support, which a lot mm-hmm. of entrepreneurs don't have. Don't have. Like I've talked about on the show, it can be really lonely running a business. Um, oh yeah. And it's hard. Yeah. So, I mean, when you've got somebody beside you. Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, as long as it's working well, obviously, and you have that vision. I love that you said that because I can see if you don't have where the direction of where we're going and you both feel confident in that, there can be so many, it's going to be lack of communication. Where are we going? There's going to be so many issues. You guys have each other, which I love. Yeah. And you know, and even though, even if you have this very clear vision of where you're going and what you're trying to accomplish, you know, we still have different ideas about how to get there. And so we, you know, we have to sync that up and sometimes we do it Bob's way and sometimes we do it more my way. And, you know, most often we move to some sort of a middle road, but, um, but it's, you know, it's, it's definitely a challenge. And I, I know with all of our retailers, a lot of them have partners that are maybe a sister or a mom or a spouse or, you know, um, and it's, it's, you know, it can be, it can be tricky, but it's also super rewarding yeah. you know, to work with somebody super close to you. So I love it. We're lucky. We love working together. I think I can't even imagine us not working together. Oh, so. I can't either at all. Right. Do you guys right? have defined roles? Like this is me. This is what I'm in charge of. This is my, what I'm in charge of. And you guys stay in your own lanes or is there a lot of crossover? Well, we do because we have been working. Are you familiar with EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System? Yeah. Yep. 
So we we do EOS. We kind of do EOS light, probably, I would say, um, in the company. But we do have roles for not only me and Bob, but everybody in the company. And of course, there's crossover. And of course, you know, we're, you know, we're small company. So there's still a lot of collaboration on a lot of things. But, you know, Bob's role is definitely the visionary role. He's in charge of big relationships, you know, all those things. And I am more of the implementer, strategic planner, that person who makes, you know, a lot of, in a traditional company, you might call me the president of the company. So that gets the shit done. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Yeah, I got to do that. We need those so, people because uh, I'm with Bob. Absolutely. I'm definitely the visionary. But to, exactly. to get the shit done is a challenge for us visionaries. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. And it's, you know, I think it's easy for the visionaries like you and Bob. And especially, you know, Bob is, um, we also do a lot of work with like strengths and Colby and like mm. really trying to understand how e- all the people in our company work. Not only what do they do, but how do they do it? And um, one of his, one of his main uh, characteristics is, um, positivity, which makes him lovely to be around all the time because he's, he is so positive. He brings such a positive, um, impact to the company and to my life. Mm. Um, you know, but there, you know, there are, there, you know, if you, sometimes if you're too positive, you don't look at the downside. So sometimes that's my, that's my role. Say, hmm, well, there might be some pitfalls in here and yeah. have you thought of this? And, so that's it's not you know, all that's, rainbows and sunshine. Not all rainbows and unicorns. <laughs> no. no, it's not. It's like you can't just say, um, you know, let's throw up a landing page and did it. Okay, well, that's going to take a little bit of work. You know, this doesn't happen in ten minutes. You know, we're gonna, you know, so right. all these things. I know. I'm guilty people. of that too. I'm like, just throw up a page. Like it could be yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Not so easy. <laughs> right. Um, but. Um, so, you know, that, you know, that's more of my role. And like my, my, my archetype is, is strategic planner. So like uh, all those, all the strengths that, that I bring are um, all like all in my head, like learner and achiever and, and uh, ideation and all these, all these like more, you know, in my head, intellectual kinds of things. Um, and he brings a lot of the emotional intelligence to the company and the you know the positivity and the communication and all that kind of great stuff. So, so it's 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 a nice combo. And um, you know we have a complementary skill set just even in retail. So it right. it works exactly. It works. Well, and I have to say um, I love it, it. It does work. Obviously, twenty three years later, um, yeah. the balance. But also, you guys. One thing that I have thought about many times with you guys is you've had the same employees basically for so long. Like your employee re- really nice. retention is so strong and that mm-hmm. comes from great leadership. And Thank so you. obviously like you guys know what you're doing, have figured it out, have inspired your team. I love like every time we go to the retail success summit, it's always your same team members. Yeah. Like they're and, great. Yeah, they're great. And you obviously teach this to our retailers, which are people that like you guys are people that they need to hear from for sure. Like you have figured out, I feel like how to be amazing leaders, um, which is awesome that you guys get to do that together. And yeah, well, yeah. and you know, it's so funny because I feel like if there was one area that I wish I could grow more in, that's probably one of them. Like, it, it's, you know, I do think we have a great culture and, um, you know, have committed employees and we, you know, have a great time together and all those great things. But I always feel like I can do more and um, and and be better and be, you know, learn more in that area. So I think it's like that in particular is like a never ending Oh, thing, so. hands down. I completely agree. I mean, Pauline yeah. is my integrator and so she manages the team and there's so many times, I mean, I feel like at least every other phone call, we have our weekly phone calls and every other, she's saying something like, I feel like I could do more. I wish I could be doing more. I want to do more. And then if yeah. you talk to the team and they're, they love her, everybody's happy, yeah. but it's like, that shows good leadership though. Like you care, you want to be there. You want to show up for your people. And when they stay, that really shows that you're doing a great job. So, um, I just, 
we, we even have an employee now who was with us for two or three years left to kind of raise her kids and she's back with us again. So oh, that's fun to, yeah. to like somebody would want to come back again. It's, that's really great. So, oh, totally. Uh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, something you said you put in the questionnaire that I sent ahead of time was visioning yeah. to focused action. And I want to know yeah. more about this because I feel like there's some things I could learn here. Yeah. Well, um, you know, we have really um, struck up a nice friendship with Ari Weinsweig from Zingerman's uh, Family of Businesses in Ann Arbor, Michigan. We're located in Michigan. And um, he's just such an interesting, cool guy. Like, I would have to say he's a cool cat. Like, he's oh, just yeah. like, that's <laughs> Did you ever get a chance to meet Ari when you were at the summit? You must have. I didn't actually like meet him, but I've seen him speak twice. I think. Speak. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he's just such an, a cool guy. And that's one of the main tenants and things that they started early on at Zingerman's when they were literally just, you know, a 400 square foot deli in Ann Arbor. And now they're like a $70 million conglomerate or whatever. Like they've really done an amazing job with their company, but um, you know, they start, they, they use visioning to instead of push uh, to get something, to get someplace, but to pull mm. the whole company. Right. And so it's, it's a really fascinating um, it's a, it's a thing that was actually started by um, these, these two guys who were building rockets for NASA. Mm. And what they found was that they had all these people working on these very tiny components of the rocket, and they were having a hard time seeing the big picture of the man on the moon, right? So they did this, they developed this, and they called it, they didn't call it visioning, these guys, these scientist guys who actually developed this stuff. They called it uh, preferred futuring. That's what Ooh. they call it. So what's our preferred future outcome? But so some other people loved this idea and it works, right? So like if you're if you don't think like, oh, I'm working on a component, you're like, I'm working to get a man on the moon. Like that's far more inspiring. It brings better, you know, your your actual work on the component is better. Your in you know, enjoyment of your job is better. So and it's like you're you're pulling your pulling the team instead of pushing mm. to get everywhere. And so, um, so other people took, took this idea of preferred futuring and developed this process of um, visioning um, for businesses. And Ari teaches this. And we went and did some workshops with him. And um, we also did another workshop right around the same time called Lifebook. And mm. it's again, it's, have you know Lifebook? Because of you guys. And I okay. started it. Yeah, it's so good. Please it's tell people about so it. Oh, good. It's so good. Well, both of these things are like about understanding what, you know, where do you want to get? And like putting it in the language of the future. Like, you know, I am sitting on my uh, lanai on Kauai, overlooking the ocean as the tropical breezes, you know, blow through my hair. Like, I don't have a lanai in Hawaii yet, but like you, you put that in the future, like if that's something that you want and you, and you, if you can vision what you want for your, um, for your business, for your life, uh, and you can be very clear, very specific um, and very uh, detailed and emotional, then you can make choices. It's much easier to make choices that are going to get you to that place. Now, you could create a vision um, for your life like we do in, li in, in Lifebook in you know, each different area of your life. You could create a vision. Like we could have sat down, you and I, Crystal, together and created a shared vision for the outcome of this podcast. Like, how do we want, yeah. how do we want to feel? How do we want the audience to feel? Yeah. What do we want the vibe to be? What kind of wine do we want to drink? You know, all these different, we could have created a vision for this podcast and, you know, we would have, we, we could certainly have nailed it, right? Yep. Because we had, vi we had envisioned it and felt it in, you know, 
we felt it and thought it and planned it, all these things. So you can vision for very small things. You can do visions for, you know, your life or your business. So um, it's, it's super powerful. Um, and, and one of the metaphors that we always use when we're talking to our clients about this is the idea of um, uh, if you're out on a hike and you get to the top of a beautiful peak and you think it's just the most lovely peak, but it's not the place where your campsite is with the food and the tents and the beds and the water and the warm clothes, you may have gotten to a beautiful peak. But it's not what you wanted. It's the wrong peak. So you got to like, you have to go down the mountain and go back up another peak to get what you want. Much better just to get to the correct place yes. in the first, you know, the first time. Mm. So um, I, we like to call it kind of your North Star, your guiding star. Like what's, what's keeping you, what's pulling you forward. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's super powerful for your life, super powerful for your business. Um, and, and like, you know, we teach retailers, like you can even, if you're having a, a you know, a special event um, coming up, maybe it's just a small one. Maybe it's just a, you're having a, a, a you know, a, I don't know, like a, a dog walking party if you're a pet store, right? Um, but you can create a little vision around how do you want that to go? And it's much more likely that it's going to end up being like that than if you hadn't done that work. Yep. So. There are so many things I love about what you just said. It you you said it makes decisions easier because so much easier. I mean, we are faced with decisions every single day. And I don't know about you, but I'll be like, I don't fucking know. Like I pick something, I don't know. I and then you're like, Am I doing the wrong thing? Is this gonna and then also the energy of going up the wrong peak. So then, mm -hmm. so now you have to like find the new energy, you know, and go or just use this existing that's lacking because you went up this big mountain and now we have to go up this new peak to get where we actually wanted to go. And it's a it sucks. Hard, yeah, it sucks. It's a lot harder and it takes more time. And then if you're constantly doing that, then burnout happens. And then I think that's when totally. you question a lot too, like, is yeah. this what I'm supposed to be doing? Yeah. I don't, I can't do this because you run out of energy. So oh, totally. you have to have the vision for what you're doing. And then also in the sense of like the dog walking party for the pet store, you know, I love the idea of creating visions for everything. And this can be so fast. It doesn't have to be this long thing, right? It's just like, how do I want tonight to go with this dog walking party? And then I feel like it would be so much more fulfilling because then you do the party. Maybe you're like, I'm really hoping for just a really inspiring conversation or for somebody to have, you know, like yes. something that it doesn't have to be this monumental thing, but just one no. thing. And then you go home and you've had that conversation because I believe of the power of the universe and manifestation and you put it out there and it will. 100%. Yeah. And so then you come home from the dog walking event and you're like, I had that special conversation and it, it gives me chills thinking about it because you're like, it happened and it's it so hurt. much more meaningful that event than if you didn't have any kind of vision with it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All those things. And it's so true. And it is so true that if you put that, that intention out there, like I want to have a great conversation tonight with somebody, it's, it's going to find you, you know, yeah. and, and it's, you're going to be open to it in a completely different way. Maybe, you know, without that visioning, somebody would have said the same exact opening sentence to you, but you're not open to it or you, you're not aware of it, but that just brings awareness to what it is you actually want out mm -hmm. of this, whatever it is. Yeah. Oh. But at, like at Zingerman's, one of the things that they do is like the, like the, um, they have a, a restaurant called the Roadhouse and it's a more like full service sit down restaurant, it's delicious. Um, but a lot of times the staff will get together and say, all right, what's our vision for the shift tonight? You know, and then they just like have a little visioning, brainstorming together. Like, how do we want this night to go? You know, what are the things that we envision that are going to happen mm. that are going to be great tonight? 
you know? That's epic because I worked at Chili's for four years and uh, one of my favorite jobs. It's provisioning there. Come on. I, I know. Right. But like seriously, you walk into your shift and sometimes you're like ready to go and like pumped and whatever. But then sometimes, you know, somebody comes up and they're checking in. They've had drama and then they're so irritated. And another person's like comes up and is really hungover and they're not feeling it. And if there was just this little huddle where we're like, hey, right. guys. What do we want to have for tonight? It's going to change the people who are low vibes right now, right? Bring in higher vibe. And then all of a sudden it's elevated to a whole new experience for everybody involved, including the customers. Like I love that. Especially the customers, Yes, right? Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. It's it's like, it's like, you know, it, it feels like magic. Mm. It's not, but it feels the way that it works feels like magic. And just keep in mind, these were literally rocket scientists that developed this process. So this is not, you know, hocus pocus, new age, whatever, whatever it is. It's really, it's, it's soundly um, grounded in brain science. Beautiful. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you start to build your bigger visions, especially your visions for your life or your visions for your business, one of the things that is important is to like share them with people because they can help you get there. People will, people want to help you get to your vision, you know, and if you share it, they might know the person who has the, you know, house with the lanai on Kauai in Hawaii that you could rent so that maybe you could find the space later on that you're going to buy. Yeah, because right? all like, of a sudden you rent there and then you get talking to the neighbors and the neighbors are yeah. interested in selling yeah. and then you're like, boom, it's all, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, it's like, it's, if you don't, if you don't put it out there, it's, uh, you know, it, it, people, people will help you achieve your vision if you let them. Yeah. This is a beautiful reminder because I started the Lifebook Pro program. And then I was like, Oh, I'll do it next weekend. Oh, I'll do it next weekend. Oh, I'll keep going next weekend. I've put it off since I saw you guys at retail success summit in June. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's when I joined it right after that was so inspired, so ready, like so excited. And then I've just constantly been putting it off because I'm not giving myself enough time to create the vision for what I want. Saying it out Mm -hmm. loud sounds sad. Like if I had a friend say that to me, I would be like, you, why, you're, why, what are you putting? You're worth it, Crystal. I'm telling you right now, you are worth that time. Take it. And anybody go book yourself, go book yourself, uh, like the Fairmont Denver and, uh, like a, a room and with get a massage and then start writing. And just, yeah, make the time and space for that because it is, it's so critical. If anybody's listening to this, that is similar to me in that sense where you keep putting yourself off. This is a nice little. I'm like, and me, not just (laughs) you. We we all do it. We all do it. I know. I feel like you, you're further along. You've been working at this for sure. And what's cool too, I know like both you and Bob have done this together. So that support together, like I really want Dustin to do it with me too. Yes. Um, But yeah, yeah, it's a good reminder to not to stop putting that off because it's going to make decisions better. Like I just all all things better. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, like both with Lifebook or any kind of visioning that you that you might do with a partner, whether it's your life partner or whether it is a business partner or whatever. um, We always say that you guys should do your your separate visions first. Okay. And then share and blend the parts that are appropriate. So like, you know, um, when, when Bob and I wrote our vision for Wizbang training, we, um, we wrote it separately. And of course, a lot of it was the same, but there was stuff that he had written that I didn't and stuff that I wrote that he didn't. And we kind of hashed that out and like merged it into one big vision together. So, we, you know, we each were able to have our own mental space first and then created a shared reality 
of our, our vision. So, Hey, real quick, if you are a retail store owner, I would love to see you at Evolve. This is my in-person marketing conference happening April 26th and 27th, 2023 in Denver, Colorado at the Gaylord Rockies, which is a stunning venue. You get to spend two days with me and my team and keynote speakers, as well as other retailers looking to evolve their marketing business and lives. It's an intimate event. We only have 200 tickets available and we've already sold out. We've sold a lot of those seats already. So this event will sell out. Do not delay because we have special pricing depending on when you hear this and when you sign up. And uh, I would love to see you in that room. So go to crystalmediaco.com slash evolve. That's crystalmediaco.com slash evolve to get your ticket. Going back to burnout, I mentioned that, you know, about because then you're climbing up the different peak every time. And after a while, you are exhausted. Yeah. I've heard you and Bob say you guys have a mastermind, the Platinum Mastermind Club, where yeah. you, this is like your, your really great coaching. You guys meet several times a year. I think probably your most successful retailers are in Absolutely. Platinum. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, super and, successful, super great retailers. Yeah. And I think it's, I'm sure a part is, if not a big part is because they are part of platinum. Like they have you guys as their guide yep. and, um, it's an amazing group. And they, for have each other. they have exactly. each other. It's so yes. great. Yeah. Which is critical. I think in running a business, you have to have that kind of support. Um, and you guys said after one of the retail success summits after COVID, cause we did a virtual one, mm -hmm. how you were just hearing from your platinum mastermind members of like, just everybody was so tired so and tired. yeah, like life changed drastically. If you're not a retailer, like just imagine these retail storefronts that all of a sudden their doors are closed and they're building websites and they're selling through Facebook and Instagram. And then all of a sudden their store got opened again. So they're maintaining the website, all the social selling. Now they're back, but now they have all these different rules they have to follow and finding good help. I mean, like their Half world's their got- people quit already. And yep. it was, yep. it was stressful to the nth degree. It was degree. stressful. Stressful. So I want to know two things. One, what kind of advice were you giving, are you giving to those retailers who are in that period of like, I am fucking exhausted? Yeah. And, and then secondly, I want to know, have you been there before and experienced that? Totally. Right now? Every, I mean, there, you, you can't get through life without having periods of time like that. So back to your first question, what were we telling, especially our platinum mastermind group and our best, our core group of uh, best clients? Well, honestly, right after COVID, a lot of what we were telling them was, look, take the break. It, you know, like normally we would be like, you need to have extended hours. You need to be open every single day. You need to be very focused on what your customers want and need. And we still, you know, you still want to do that. But if they didn't take the break, if they didn't actively rest, and I would love to talk about active rest in just a minute. If they didn't actively rest, they were going to, they were going to close their stores. They were going to quit. They were going to throw up their hands and then all the good stuff that they had done, all, everything that they loved about working in their business would be gone. So, okay. So do you need to close for an extra day a week? Do you need to cut your hours? Do you need to hire an extra person that maybe you can't quite afford for a little bit of time? You can't afford, you can't afford to take yourself and, you know, put yourself in the hospital. Like people were doing this, like it's just nuts. Yeah. Right. And so you have to take the rest and you, and you can't feel guilty about it. So I was recently, um, I don't know, maybe about a year ago on a girls weekend with my college friends and high, you know, high energy, super active group, like very, you know, sparky, lovely women. And I think we were all a little burnt out. It was right after COVID. We were all a little burnt out and, you know, we were, we were talking about it because normally we would have been like, all right, let's take a hike today or, you know, what craft are we going to do in the town or whatever, you know, whatever. And we were all like, oh, I just kind of want to sit by the 
cool. <laughs> Maybe we'll go Wait, shelling. Nothing an option? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, is nothing an option? Can we just go <laughs> shelling for, you know, five minutes and then go back and sit down in the, you know, just, you know, the lawn chair? And I really started, so it really made me think about this. And the fact that we get so conditioned to believe that if we're doing, and I'm going to put this in air quotes, nothing, that we're being lazy, we're being unproductive, we are um, not achieving, we are, you know, all these things that we feel like we're supposed to be doing, right? Um, and, and what we're actually doing is resting. And rest is an activity. And it's a critical activity. We have to, I mean, we do it every day when we sleep. Right. But there are other times in our lives where your body tells you, your mind tells you, your emotions tell you, you need to take a rest. And that doesn't mean, you know, it literally can mean do nothing, like nothing. And that I know that like just hearing me say that there are probably people listening that 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 fills them with anxiety to think about sitting and doing nothing. And um, I just want to encourage you to try that a little bit and think about the fact that you're not doing nothing. What you're doing is you're resting and it's a thing and it is an actual activity that our minds and our bodies really need. And, you know, it, it I mean, my goodness, I was, you know, a really, really old when I figured that out. <laughs> Well, you're 28, so right. you were like 27. <laughs> I'm 28, right? Exactly. So, um, but you know, I think I, you know, so. I think that that is, I think it's just so important. Um, I, it sounds like such a simple thing. Oh, like just rest, but we don't. We don't actually rest. Ah, we fake rest. We fake rest. Or we fake rest, and I've talked about this on the show before. Um, Janelle, who is a guest of mine, talk, coined it chronic guilt. Yes. And yes. because I will feel so guilty if yes. I'm taking a break, if right. I am resting, if I'm binging Netflix, if I, I, my go to app is TikTok, if I yes. scroll on there for 30 minutes, if whatever. And all of a sudden it's like, and there is a difference between like procrastination and rest and like, and filling your mind with good things. Like there's totally differences in there, yeah. but there have been times where I mentally just can not do it. Right. And I feel like I'm going to break and I'm feeling the anxiety. And so I'm like, nope, I need to go. I need to stop. I need to get out of here. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to lay down. And then you're sitting there and it's like, all, oh, okay. So now we're pushed back longer and all the guilt and oh, laziness and all the things. Oh, but I'm being lazy. I am just lazy no. right now. No, no, I'm actually doing a thing and it's resting. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's such, it's such a difference. It's like, it's like, I remember like literally sitting and thinking about this and then talking about it with my girlfriends and we're all like, <gasps> Like, you mean when we're, we're not actually doing nothing? We're, we're really, we're actually doing something that's good and important for us? Hmm. Okay. How amazing. And is yeah. that what you consider active resting? Yeah. 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 Active yeah. rest. Yeah. Active yes. rest. That's oh, kind I of love how it. I think and, about it in my mind. Yeah. Well, and as business owners, our minds, like you're always thinking, right? You're like, did that go out? How are we doing with our goals? What's happening here? What about that event? Do we have everything we need? Yeah. It is constant. And so having those force breaks to do nothing and like stare out the window and notice the cow across the street. I, have a, I kind of live in the country, so yeah. I have cows and horses and I'll just like watch them. And I'm like, wow, I can feel this is almost therapy. I just to have mm -hmm. this moment for my brain to have a rest. It's, right. it's incredible. Right. Well, you know, and I think that that's really kind of one of the powerful things about uh, having like a daily meditation practice oh. is that it it is <laughs> it actually is rest, even though, again, it's we're, we're tricking ourselves into thinking that we're doing something and we are we're actively resting our brain, you know, yeah. and but it but it feels so much better to say not doing nothing. I'm meditating, right? Like it, 
alleviate yes. that guilt that we have, you know, that story that we're telling ourselves like, oh, you're being lazy. You're not doing anything. You're not being productive. You know, there's so yep. much. I call that head list. trash. Yeah. Head trash. Like how many things are on your to-do list? Why are you sitting here right now? Yep. That's exactly. All that negative self-talk that we get all the time. Yep. It's beautiful advice. We got to rest. And even if it's a 10 minute, you know, within your day, it doesn't mean you have to take a massive vacation. Mm -hmm. If you can take it, that's something that I feel like you and Bob are really great at teaching your flat members. Um, and just talking about like that balance, kind of like work-life balance and you're helping retailers who, again, if you're not a retailer, like this retailers are open 24 seven. They are, tip, well, not 24-7, but they seven days a week. If they have an e-com platform, then they're also selling online. So that is 24-7. They, they're doing so much every single day. The thought of like stepping away from your brick and mortar business, I think, is really challenging for a lot of retailers to think about that. Like log- right. all the logistics, like I think about with my dogs, how, you know, all that comes into play. But then real life, like this is how I pay my bills. How am I going to be able to walk away for a week? And you've got, we have a shared client, Maureen with Skirt, who like has gone to Italy and has just like freed up more time, has yep. more work-life balance. Yep. You guys are so great at teaching that. Like how, how you do you- are there two weeks in Paris. Yeah. Oh man. See? Yeah. So yeah. how do you help people? I mean, like, obviously you do this on a much more, like it's we can't cover it all in this podcast, but do you have like real, a quick tip or something that helps people achieve more of that balance? So, I mean, I think that there are a couple of things. I mean, obviously you have to invest in building um, a team that understands their roles and like, you know, all the things that we kind of talked about earlier and kind of build a culture that um, is supportive. But even more than that, honestly, I think you have to be willing to let go and kind of let the chips fall where they may. Like, honestly, Mm. honestly, if you walked away from your business for one week, what's the worst thing that could happen? Like I've had this conversation with dozens and dozens, probably a hundred retailers. And you know, my wife said, what's the worst thing that could happen? And they're like, but, but I'm like, no, but really what's the worst thing that could happen? one customer gets a bad experience. Oh, 10 customers get a bad experience. What's the worst thing that could happen? And they're always like, I, I guess, I guess nothing. I'm like, right. (laughs) You just need to let go and give your team a chance to prove how awesome they are. Like, I think so, so often we get like, and people, and you're a lot of times team members don't, step up. Don't pick up the slack because we're the entrepreneurs always rushing in to fight the fire and do the thing and pick up the load. And and if you just don't do it, they will, they do. Right. Yeah. And I give them an opportunity. Yeah. I can't tell you how many people have come back to me and said, you know, I did it. My team was amazing. Nothing terrible happened. I've, I'm scheduling two weeks next time. You know, you just, sometimes you just have to, you, it's, it's kind of like walking off a cliff a little bit. You just sometimes have to take that leap of faith and just, just say, well, it's not going to be perfect, but what's the worst thing that could happen if I, Mm. if I took a week vacation? Exactly. That's something that, um, on, I had a friend when I was going to start my first social media business before Crystal Media. I, I started it, but I was really nervous and I was like 23 years old and I didn't have a clue of what I was doing. And um, I reached out to him because he was a little bit more established in his business. And we went out for beers and he was like, what's the worst that can happen? And I'm like, I go back to work at Chili's. And he's like, okay, can you live with that? And I'm like, I loved working at Chili's. And he's like, yeah. okay, so what do you have to lose? Like, just go for it. But that is something I think, then I kind of forgot about that. And then you get caught up in you're, you're doing the doing of all the things, right? And and you you're hanging on so tight. I think business owners hang on so tight to our business. Yep. And there has to be this level of trust in our team. Mm -hmm. And then also, like you said, allow the pieces to fall where they will fall. Because you know what? If it all falls apart, 
then wow, how you are learning a ton on the weaknesses of your business. Like what an, what a gift, right? Like, but if it, but honestly, I've never seen that happen. I I've never seen that happen. It just doesn't happen. Um, you know, the, the team does step up. The people do, I mean, the people do their jobs properly and maybe not exactly the way that the store owner would do them or one, whatever, but they're, they get done. I mean, here's the thing that, that I will say for absolute stone cold certain is if you don't rest, if you don't take the vacation, if you don't take the breaks, if you do get too burned out, you will get a forced break because you're going to get sick and you're going to end up in the hospital or you're going to have, you know, a mental breakdown and like have to take time off at a time, not if you're choosing without any warning and with no advanced planning. It, it, I, now this is unfortunately, I've seen this as well too. So, or, you know, or, or it happens to this, you know, a family member or something and you, you have to take these unplanned, unforced breaks and stuff. I mean, nothing ever falls apart to like, to the foundations, you know, maybe one little tower tumbles down. Oh, well, rebuild the tower when you get back. Who cares? Exactly. Right. Exactly. I mean, I'm glad that you said that because I had my friend Laura on the show. We'll link to her episode. And she did wind up in the hospital because she was going and they like doctors didn't know what was wrong with her. And there was so like, it was scary and she got taken out and boom, her priorities changed. It's like her life changed. It was, we don't want to, but often like we wait till the worst thing can happen. Yes. Like that's not fun. No. Like no one wants to go through that and we don't have to. You know, we don't have to. And I think, I think there's just so much pressure and like, again, all these, all these external expectations that like, just, you just got to check that. And again, that's why I like this visioning thing too, because like, you know, it, if you, it just, it almost effortlessly pulls you in the right direction. And as you mentioned just earlier, helps you make decisions because, you know, there, 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 there are more opportunities than any of us could possibly, you know, take advantage of. So you have to pick, yeah. right? Yep. And that kind of, and it helps with that. So, so when's your next vacation planned? Oh, <gasps> Susan, putting me on the spot because I was just thinking yesterday, I have no travel booked and that's so insane for us because like we always have something. We did just go to New York um, the beginning of the month in October, but it was like such a busy, crazy trip that I like needed a vacation from my vacation. Yes. So many uh, people yeah. like they, that. They, that's right. Like, and so you like, it's fun to take trips like that, but you yeah. didn't need a vacation from your vacation. Yeah. So we need to chill. So Dustin and I were talking the other night. He, I love Hawaii too, but he's like on another level with Hawaii. Like that man is supposed to be in Hawaii. His, yeah. He's, I've never seen him so happy in his he's, life. Like he's he just, got the he's aloha happy. spirit. Oh, he so does. And so we talked about going in January, February when it's colder here in Colorado before our event in April, that way mm-hmm. it's like, let's have a little rest time. So I love we it. Just have to book it. I'm glad that you book reminded it. me. Yeah. yeah. When's your, your next, uh, t- your next vacation? Uh, I'm going to Toronto this weekend. For a, ho- for a fun Halloween party. Yeah, wow. we've got, yeah, we, we have, um, my family has a like now fifth generation cottage up in Ontario, um, mm. in, on the French river. If any of you are from Ontario and you know the French river that we've got a little cottage up there, uh, that my great grandfather built. And so now my kids are the fifth generation, but we have dear, dear friends from our who are neighbors of our cottage up there. They live in Toronto and they throw this huge Halloween bash every year. So oh. we're um, we're going to Toronto for the for the Halloween party. That's my next one. So oh, how and then after fun. that, and then the weekend after that, I'm going to Savannah with that same group of girlfriends from college that I just mentioned. So oh my I've gosh, got two things on the on the book. So that's kind of fun. You've got fun things to look forward to. I love that your girlfriends from college, that you guys are getting together and like make the effort because I know it can be, yeah, but you do it. And that's obviously meaningful. Every year. We do it every single year. And I have another group of girlfriends from when I worked at Macy's out in California 
And like, I just saw them two weeks ago. So, um, you know, they, oh. they are, they are both my like heart groups. So yeah, we make time for each other and, you know, having, having those close friendships is so important. Oh, it's so incredibly important. Um, in fact, I'm at my dear friend's studio right now filming this. If anybody's watching this, they're like, where is Crystal? This is not her normal place. Um, and they, Vi and Christina both have been on my show. And I'm going to head up after this. They live upstairs. This is her photography studio. And they're like my entrepreneur friends where it's like when I you like you when you're struggling with stuff and it's not right to talk to your team about it's like internal like on like you need the business owner's perspective of things and sometimes they're just like brutally honest and uh, I need that with love always you gotta have those those groups yeah so yeah yeah, I love it. yeah. that's good um that's good. Susan. I feel like I could talk to you for another. I know, like several we hours. Have, I love this. We have this more things to talk about, so I'll we do. We do another podcast, another time. You're coming back on. Yep, <laughs> you're coming back on. Hopefully, your first experience was good. It was fun. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, it was great. Awesome. Um, tell everybody where they can learn more about you. Uh, you can find me at whizbangtraining.com. W h i z b a n g training.com. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, of course, link to you. I so appreciate so everything fun. that you shared today. This was so fun. Yeah, good. And um, I'll see you soon, definitely Ooh. online. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody, I will see you on the next see you. Bye.